Howdy, everybody, and thanks uh, for joining me for another Max Hacks today. And today I'm going to actually talk about another feature of Fubra that I really like, and it's pretty damn handy because I'm personally not a fan of Pandora or Last of Femme, even though as handy as they are for finding new artists, I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of it. I like to have my library control and my music. So I'm going to show you something that's really handy in FUBAR. And it works within your local network or streaming to your phone or media enabled device. Say a PSP, a 3DS, anything that can support UPnP or DLNA will work with this. Now first off, we're going to go to FUBAR's website and go to the components and we're going to go look up UPnP DLNA, which I will put the link in the comments. It is what it is. It's a UPnP server. You can stream audio as it says here. PS3, Xbox 360, iPhone, Android phone, TV, any smart enabled TV that should have DLNA or UPnP enabled. I believe for the Roku they also have a UPnP channel. There's a lot you can do with the Roku which is pretty funny for such a small device. There's a ton you can do. Or even Western Digital Media Streaming Server, Apple TV, whatever the hell you have that's UPnP will work with this. So let's get to it. Now we're going to start a FUBAR 2000. If it isn't already, I mean, my FUBAR is always running but for the sake of argument. I'm going to launch it with you guys. I'm going to go down to Preferences. First off, I'm going to go to File, Preferences, or Control P. Now you're going to see in your components once it's installed, UPnP DLNA Renderer Server Control Point. It's running and all happy. Now once you get in there, first thing that's going to be open up on the preferences is components. Once you installed it, you can scroll down here and you'll see UPnP DLNA. It's running, it's there, it's happy. Now when you go under tools, click the little twirler, then you go down to UPnP. If you click behavior, that's basically for your UPnP selection, for your browser. If you now just click here UPnP, you click controller, you can tell it to show if you go under UPnP and under controller, you can tell it to how to format the audio files, you know, how it displays on your device. I left it at default, you could actually customize it, which I generally keep out codec and bit rate and sample rate. I mean I, I don't spur it that much. Now under server these are all your settings for your server. It is what it is. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Network name, you can name this whatever you want. I try to keep my naming something that I know what it is. You can change the port from the default. You can stop the server, start the server there. Now, add wave and LPCM compatibility streamers. Say you're streaming FLAC files, AUG, APE, high end file formats. Thou add a stream below it. Say your device doesn't support that file format, it'll stream this. But, add wave and LPCM. Compatibility streams will add a layer of audio file streaming that say your device can't render FLAC or AUG or for whatever reason. Most should, some don't. I noticed, for example, my default Verizon media app, which does support UPnP, which is nice, doesn't like FLAC. It will play some of them, some of them won't play. Go figure. By default, it's enabled and it's there. Now, the bottom part is media render. You can tell this to stop, but I leave this enabled because I actually like controlling my foobar instance from my phone. It's pretty handy. It works.
under content, you can tell it to show you under content. You can tell it to tell it show playlist, media player, what's playing, the album art. You know, you can disable these things to reduce bandwidth. Say you're streaming over the internet to your your device. Now, under format, track titles, and track artists, you can tell it to whatever you need to tell it to do. Like artist and title can be something completely different. I'd say leave it default so you don't get confused. Customize media library tree. And that's if you actually want to go in there and change how the media library tree looks like when you're browsing it from another device. I leave it at default, works just fine. Streaming profiles. This is basically your transcoding page. This is where you can tell it to force to change file formats. I leave it at defaults because I haven't had any issues, but if you're going to need to, you can change them here. Now, under transcoding to MP3, this is pretty good as well if you have MP3. You have now under transcoding to MP3, this is pretty good to set up if you say have black or AUG files. This will probably help any woes you have with your device not playing those files. Probably the best thing to do as well. I mean, if you tell it to say stream only 64 bit, you know, 64 kilobits. You're looking at a lot less bandwidth used, and we all know that some phone plans have restricted data plans. For example, Verizon has a restricted data plan, AT&T does too, but they say it's unlimited, but they throttle after a certain point. And same with T-Mobile. So that's pretty good if you want, if you don't mind the audio quality being degraded a bit. If you don't mind. Decoding the PCM, same thing as transcoding. You can tell it to decode certain file formats. That's basically the compatibility stream. Uh, playback stream capture is what the device is going to play back. By default, it's wave. You can leave it there. Generally works. You can always leave the defaults there if you want to. Under audio processing, you could add basically tell it to convert from 5.1 to stereo so you have AC3 file formats file formats that are 5.1 you can tell it to equalize crossfade you can tell it to remove silence skip silence pretty good stuff if you don't want to have that if you just want seamless playback now next up is internet access now on this user I don't have it enabled but you would check this public IP you would set up an IP that your rep. Now, public server IP or host name is an IP address that your router has set up that you can access your home computer, your media server, that is, externally. Now, there's a lot of free DNS host name directors, a lot of free ones. And I will put a link down in the comments about that. You basically set the host name of the server there. Straightforward. Now login and password is a unique login and password for the FUBAR UPnP. You set that up, set something very strong so that nobody else can access your network because that is a hole. Now also make sure that you forward the ports that FUBAR UPnP uses. Otherwise, this might not work at all. Now, only allow internet access if you know that what you're doing and that your firewall on your router is strong and you are secure on your network because this is a pretty big hole if you have something unsecure. That's pretty much it to the FUBAR UPnP setup. Now on Android, I quite like FUBAR Con. It works, it's beautiful, it's a lot better than the other FUBAR controlling app. I don't know why I've had issues with the other one, but FubarCon has had no issues. I've been able to control my FubarCon application, which some people would say that's a little bit absurd, but if you have a larger home and your media server is in one room, but you have devices or you have audio streaming to your living room or wherever in the house, you can control FubarCon straight from your phone without having to do anything else. And say you have hundreds of gigabytes of music that you've kept. You kept a library of music. Beautiful. Perfect example right there. 
or say you don't want to use Pandora and you're outside of your house and you want access to your library. Foobar European people do the same thing. It's free. It works. Most of the time it will work. I haven't had any issues, but I've seen people have issues. But that's pretty much everything to this video. Thanks for listening to me again and my ramblings. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, and have a good night, good day, good evening. Don't forget your tea, and see you guys.